Our next technique that I'm going to demonstrate is the cloud technique. More people ask for this demonstration than any other technique because it's so popular. Now in order to do this, you'll need to roll a base coat of a satin finished blue paint on your surface before you begin. Also, you'll want to work with a pure white paint as well as a pale gray color paint. From there, keep watching the video and we'll teach you how to make a glaze from these paint colors. In order to create your glazes, what I've done here is I've created a white glaze and a gray glaze and that we'll be using to create the clouds. How I did that was I combined four cups using a measuring cup, combined four cups of glazing liquid with one cup paint, stirred it together, and I've created a glaze, again, for both the white paint and the gray paint. Well, now we've done our prep work getting ready to do the cloud technique. We've rolled our set and finished blue base coat. We've mixed our glazes. We've got our tools here, so we're ready to roll. The first thing we're going to do is take our small brush, dip it into our white glaze. And I like to start at the top portion of the wall, and I'm going to create kind of a jagged scallop here to the surface with the white glaze. Then I'm going to take my other chip brush, dip it into my gray glaze, and apply kind of another scallop. I think that the best way or formation that you should apply these glazes is kind of almost shaped like an eye, where it's thicker in the middle and points out a little bit more towards the edges. Then I'm going to take the little woolly, and I'm going to begin with the top portion of the white glaze. And I'm going to kind of tap through it and jab the glaze so that the top portion of the glaze gets real ripply and kind of jagged looking, like so. And the glaze goes a long way, so it's actually going to spread out. Then I'm going to take it, tap it out through the middle, and blend it in the same way with the gray glaze. Now, as we begin building the, the clouds up, that's when they really start coming to life. Now, that's why I started at the top portion, because I like to overlap them right directly on top of each other. And this is done by applying, again, your white glaze and then a little bit of your gray glaze, taking the little woolly, tapping and jabbing, mixing in the gray, and spreading them out. Again, building them up. And I tend to do them a little bit more in clusters than kind of randomly individual clouds. Sometimes I'll do two together, sometimes I'll do three together, and occasionally I'll do one large one. Now this is really a very easy process. Just don't overthink it or overwork it. Just blend it out because when it really comes to life, again, as I said before, is after you build them up and stand, it, stand back and take in the whole picture. Now occasionally what I like to do, I've talked about clusters of maybe two or three. Every once in a while, I like to just do a little stray one, just a little white and mist it out because every once in a while you see a little one. Now a lot of kids like to do this technique in their room and kids are actually the best at doing clouds and because they really don't overthink it. They just do it. Now people sometimes ask, why would you want it to have white glaze on the top and gray glaze down below? If you look at a cloud, the sun is actually shining down on the top portion and creating a shadow on the lower portion of the cloud. And that's why you actually see a white on top and a gray down below. that's our fabulous cloud technique. Remember, the most important key to your success with this is to have fun creating them. It just doesn't get any easier than this.